Thank you for joining us today as we record remotely for the National Day of Prayer. Pastors and Christian ministry leaders in your community have gathered here today to lead us in a time of praying for our community and for our nation. And we'll start out by spending some time praying for our elected officials. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this wonderful day where people are gathering all across this country to pray for our country, to pray for needs. But Lord, right now, we just want to take this time and pray for our county officials, our city officials, our state and our uh, government officials, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you give them the, your wisdom, Father. Give them the insight to deal with these problems as they come up, Father. Lord, give them the strength to overcome things that are going to show up in their lives right now. Father, I just pray that you use them to show your glory through all of this. Father, I pray for uh, just peace in their homes as everybody's working so hard. I pray that you just continue to give them your wisdom and your give them your wisdom and your strength. In Jesus' name we pray. And now let's spend some time praying for the men and women in our armed forces serving in our military. Great God and Heavenly Father, we praise you as the Lord of hosts. You are the Commander-in-Chief. There is none higher than you. And we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your power, Lord, and for your might. And we ask that by your power and your might that you would be a shield and a tower of defense for those men and women who are serving in our military. We pray, Lord, for the elected officials that are making decisions on behalf of our military, those who have, people who have never served on the battlefield, that you would give them battlefield dis wisdom so that as they make decisions, they would make wise and godly decisions on behalf of those who are serving on the battlefield. We pray for men and women who are in harm's way right now, that you keep them safe. We pray that you help them to make good and quick and sound decisions in the, in the heat of battle. We pray, Lord Jesus, for, our, for those who are in leadership positions, that you help them to make good decisions as well. We pray for the families of our military, that you would protect their marriages and their families, Lord. Being deployed for great lengths of time puts incredible stress on a marriage and on a family. And we pray that you would keep those families together and keep those marriages healthy. And then, Lord, as those who are deployed come back to the U.S., that you would help them in that time of transition as they bring back all the stress of the battlefield and all the trauma of the battlefield, that you, Lord, would be their peace to make the transition back into this world, that you would be their help and their hope, and that you would help their families to be gracious with them and long-suffering toward them. And God, we praise you, thanking you for the sacrifices that they willingly make to help defend our freedoms. Bless them in amazing ways, we pray in Christ's precious and holy name. Amen. Let's take a moment and pray for media. Father, thank you so much that we live in a time where we have the access to information that we do. Lord, we're grateful for that. I want to pray, God, for people who are producing media, uh, women and men, locally to the ends of the earth, Lord, would you give them clarity and skill, expertise in their craft. Lord, that truth might go forward. I pray for us as we consume media, God, that you would give us wisdom in choosing what we take in and what we let go. Father, as we think about the global impact of media, I want to pray for your kingdom to spread globally as well. Lord, we pray for people who are suffering all around the planet from the um, impact of the coronavirus right now. Pray for deliverance, for healing, for health, and for hope. And Father, particularly, I want to pray in these weeks for Muslims around the world who are fasting during their month of Ramadan. Father, would you shine light in homes all over the place? And God, would you work in such a way that so many Muslims find life in Jesus? Amen. Would you join me in prayer as we uh, pray over our economy and our businesses? God, I am so thankful that we are able to approach you at this time. My heart's desire, God, is that your blessings would be poured out upon this country. Uh, your word tells us that uh, you supply our needs according to your riches and glory, and I thank you for that.
God, as uh, many of our people began to open up their businesses again, I pray that the decisions that they would make uh, would be godly and wise. Lord, that uh, they would recognize how that you have sustained them, how you have protected them. Lord, I pray that uh, there would be a conviction that would enable them to make decisions based upon your word and not so much on selfish gain. God, I thank you for this valley that uh, we are a part of and each one of us minister. And I thank you for the businesses that are right here. God, I pray that each one of these business owners would experience some true blessing at this time. And Lord, that there would be a quick recovery. God, you're able to bring back to us these blessings. As a matter of fact, if we truly understand your word, you are the one that gives us all good blessings and good gifts. So Lord, I pray right now that your hand of, of protection and your hand of blessing would be there. For entrepreneurs, God, I pray that there would be just a, a new vision, new goal, new purpose. And above all, God, that what we learn in this whole setting is to be charitable with one another. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to pray for families now. Father, I just want to thank you, first of all, for your incredible love to each of us, that you love your children dearly. Thank you for sending the son whom you love to die in our place and to give us the ability to have a relationship with you and to be a part of your family. I pray that many in this valley will come to know you and will join that family, will trust in you. I uh, just want to pray for those right now that have had difficult relationships in their families, dysfunctional relationships, abusive situations, that you would heal them, that they would experience your love and forgiveness in a way that they never have before. And that as they learn to experience that forgiveness from you, that they would begin to extend that to others and you would break the cycle of abuse. I pray for marriages in our community that they would be strengthened, that when couples are in times of stress and financial difficulty, that they would not turn on each other, but that they would lean into you. And that as they do that, that they would learn to love each other more, to be patient with one another, to be good to one another, and that that marriage would be a life-giving relationship. For those marriages that are failing, God, we trust in you for all sorts of things. You can raise dead people. You can heal the sick. God, we trust that you can heal a dead marriage and that it can come back to life. We ask that you would do that in this community. For parents right now, uh, that they would not be stressed out as things have changed, that they would, as they're teaching their children, as grandparents are teaching their grandkids, that they would teach you as, as the most important thing, that they would teach your truth and your grace, and that those things would be bound to the hearts of our children, that our families would talk about you when they're walking, when they're sleeping, when they're eating, and uh, that these families would reflect you. For our teens and our young adults, that they would follow you, that they would give their lives to you, that they would take your message of truth and grace to the next generation. And as all these things are happening, God, as you strengthen marriages and people come to know you and families grow together, that uh, these families would reflect you well, that they would reflect Christ's love in their home with each other, with how they treat one another, that they would reflect you in our churches, that people would love each other more and not less, and that they would reflect you in our community and in our world. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bow before you today and you, we thank you for the National Day of Prayer that our country still has that in force. And Lord, we come before you and thank you for the fact of our churches. I have the privilege this morning of talking to you and concerned of our churches. And Lord, before I do, I just want to our own hearts to be set free and pray the prayer that David prayed when he said have mercy on us according to your unfading love according to your great compassion and blot out our transgressions and cleanse us from our sin you're an awesome God we thank you for the personal relationship we have with you and the privilege we have of calling upon your name 
in time of need or any time 24 7. and on behalf of our churches here in the valley and even around the world you're the one that established the church in the very beginning you gave your life for the church and you said and promised that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it protect us from that evil one and lord you know the importance of our churches we want our churches to be what you want them to be. And knowing the times in which we are living and the difficult days we're facing, we humbly ask for your help. And in the darkness, knowing you are our light in our weakness, we know you're our strength and our anchor in the times of storm and always. We're seeking your direction and guidance for we desperate are desperate for your supernatural power to be manifested in our churches. Help us to remove any rubbish that would hinder the work of the Holy Spirit. Set our churches on fire in this valley that people will be made aware that Jesus Christ is alive and with him all things are possible. Let the revival fires burn in each of our churches. Make us aware of the urgency of the hour and the many things that we're facing. And be, may our churches be a place of refuge and vessels of healing and love in the midst of hurt and hardness. And regardless of our circumstances, help our churches to be lighthouses, shining forth the glorious message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Help us as pastors and leaders of our churches to heed the words spoken to Joshua be of good courage. Help us prepare our churches, Lord, to be ready for the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are aware of the fact, Lord, that we need and we're asking for your help, that you would bless our churches with your mighty power and presence, that we may be what you want us to be, and we'll praise and thank you from the bottom of our hearts for hearing and answering our prayers for we ask these favors in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for all those in our educational system today. God of all, we lift up this morning those educators, administrators, students, and families who are affected in our education system, and we ask that you would be with them. With this time of change, there is so much we have to adapt and learn to do. So we lift up those teachers and professors who are finding new ways to teach and to communicate what they need to with their students. That you would give them strength, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them the skills that they need to try new things, but to always be educating and teaching and lifting up their students. And we lift up those students and those families who are trying their best during these circumstances to homeschool, to learn and continue their education to be the best students they can be for the parents who are trying to help and guide and teach their student their their children we ask that you would lift them up and give them wisdom and guidance as well as they do their best to be still in an educational mode as we go through this year we lift up all those especially who should be graduating this year and would be celebrating and uh, going through the, the services and the, and the rituals that we do for graduates but are unable to do so this year with all of their friends and the people who are around them. We would ask that you would find ways that they can still celebrate their great accomplishment, that you could still find ways to celebrate and enjoy their hard work and this transitional time in their lives. And Lord, we also lift up all those who are in support of the system, the administrators, the supervisors, the people who work within the buildings, the ones who are working now still within our churches to keep them working, to keep them safe, to keep them clean, to prepare them for when students and teachers will be able to come back. We lift up all those of workers, those who are already preparing plans for when the teachers and students do come back, for what next year's school year will be looking like, for all of those who are making our educational system still happen despite the fact that we're not in the schools. Lord, we lift them all up and we ask that you would give them your peace, your grace, and your hope through all of this. In Jesus' name. I have the incredible privilege of uh, praying for uh, health care workers and uh, first responders, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much uh, 
that I'm able to, that we are able to approach your throne of grace with great confidence and boldness, Lord, knowing that you hear us, knowing, Lord, that we are your children called by your name. I just pray, Father God, that you would uh, set a, a covering over the, the uh, health care workers and doctors that are dealing with the uh, coronavirus, with this, this situation that we're, that we're in as a nation, uh, actually as a world. And I just pray, Father, that you would set a hedge of protection around them, that you would guard them. Thank you for their willingness to sacrifice, because not only do they go and work day in and day out, but they also go home. And in doing so, Lord, they know the, the risk that they're taking uh, by being in that atmosphere and then actually going home. So I'm asking God for supernatural protection over their homes and over their families, over their loved ones, over their children, their spouses. Father God, I pray also for fire and EMS. I thank you, Lord God, for uh, men and women that are willing to uh, stand in the gap, willing to respond in a moment's notice, uh, willing to place their lives in jeopardy uh, to, to make sure that others are uh, cared for and are protected. Uh, I pray also, Lord, for the police department. God, for, for our men and women in the police departments, uh, what an incredible, difficult job they have. Uh, and I just pray, Father, that... Uh, that um, you would bless them, that you would guard their hearts and minds. Uh, Father, I pray that you would uh, surround each and every healthcare worker, fire, EMS, police, uh, doctor, that you would surround them with your favor as with a shield. I pray Psalms 91 over them, Lord, that pestilence and plague will not come near them. Uh, Lord God, I pray that you would command your angels concerning them to guard them in all of their ways, that they would lift them up in their hands so they don't strike their foot against a stone, Lord. I just pray, Father, that you would uh, uh, bring an abatement to this disease. I pray, Father God, that in doing so, it would open the doors to spiritual uh, renewal and revival. And I pray that the churches would be full. I pray, God, that you'd show yourself strong, that you would show yourself faithful and uh, show yourself true, that you'd open the eyes of those people who don't believe, open the ears of those people who just can't seem to hear. The Lord, let them absorb and embrace the truth of the fact that you love us so much you sent your only son to die for us you you lived the perfect life died the perfect death for a very imperfect people and so lord we we give you glory and honor and praise for that thank you for these men who have come here today to uh, just petition you and, and to uh, love you and i just ask father god that uh, you would spare this nation Give us another chance, Lord. Give us another chance. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.